Thank you. Now, there are certain things about France that most of its citizens can agree upon. Unemployment, for example, is stubbornly high. In fact, it's at record levels. Growth in the economy is worryingly low, creaking away at just 0.2%. There's also a consensus that so something must be done. But here's the rub. There's real division over exactly what should be done to turn things around. Fossils and Arms had hoped to make some progress today with a special summit on jobs and the economy, but it was boycotted by labour organisations. Hugh Scapel has been following all of this for us from Paris. It's the government's third annual social conference, bringing ministers, unions and employers together in a search for consensus on reform. The trouble is that this year, there is no consensus. Three major trade unions are boycotting the proceedings, accusing the government of leaning too far towards the interests of business. Monsieur le Premier Ministre, Mesdames, Messieurs les Ministres, President Hollande opened the conference on Monday, urging the social partners to embrace his pact of responsibility. That's the deal under which business gets a 40 billion euro cut in labor charges over three years, and in return is supposed to start hiring. The problem is urgent because unemployment is still moving inexorably upwards. Today, if you include part-timers who want full-time work, there are five million people in France looking for jobs. The unions say that the cuts in labour charges are a gift for business and they want firm commitments on the number of jobs that will be created. Management does not want to make promises it's not sure it will be able to keep. Social dialogue has been President Hollande's preferred method for seeing through change, but even when the partners talk, progress is slow. When one of the partners is absent, can there be any progress at all? Hugh Scofield, BBC News, Paris. How on earth is it possible to bring such opposing views together in the best interests of a struggling economy? Is it best to try to achieve consensus even as the economy deteriorates? Or do you sometimes just have to bulldoze reform through and risk industrial and political unrest? Let's get the views of someone who specialises in trying to resolve this sort of conflict. Uh, Ravi Ia is from Civil Politics of Organ joins me live now from Boston. Many thanks for joining me here on the programme. So what advice would you give President Hollande? He seems to be in an impossible situation. I would say that uh, he should concentrate on relationships first. Uh, I think you know there's a, a tendency in these situations to think if you come with the right facts and the right things that you say, you'll convince the other side with the force of your argument. And a lot of times the reasons we do things and what the research says is we do things because the emotions are with us, not because the facts are with us. So if you can get you know, the relationships working, if you can repair those divides, then perhaps the, uh, the, the factual divides will, will soon follow. So you say that consensus and uh, conversation is the way forward, but at this uh, conference that President Hollande was hosting today, three of the major unions didn't even turn up. So how can the conversation start? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's uh, pretty typical. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's, human beings are really good at forming groups, and, and uh, I think maybe if you can try and emphasize the subordinate goals. So, you know, I think, you know, listening to your earlier piece, a lot of it was about, you know, trading one thing from one group for another thing from another group. If you can start focusing on growing the economy as a whole, which is something that should benefit both sides, then maybe some of the, uh, the animosity will go down, and maybe at least they'll start sitting down together. And from an uh, empathetic point of view, uh, it must be difficult for President Hollande because, of course, he himself is a socialist, and yet he's now being accused of being too pro-business. Yeah, I mean, hopefully he can use that because I think a lot of the divides that we see are, you know, they have well-deformed groups, and those groups have a history of conflict. And so, any ways you can sort of mix up the groups and emphasize that, you know, look, I'm one of you guys. Uh, you know, hopefully he can use that to his advantage and, and try and emphasize that, you know. Look, I'm, I'm one of you guys. I share a lot of the same goals as you. Okay, many thanks for that analysis. Fascinating. He really is in a sticky spot, isn't he? But so we'll have to see how this one resolves itself. And Ravi Ira from civilpolitics.org joining me live there from Boston. Many thanks. Thank you. Okay, let's bring you a little bit of other news now because uh, in the business world, Samsung Electronics has uh, forecast a 25% drop in profits.